Hi, I'm Thiago Passos and today I'm going to show you how to configure continuous integration for a SharePoint project. So let's start. So here we have our uh, Visual Studio solution and you can see that we have four SharePoint projects and for each of them we generate a WSP package to deploy to our environment. Okay, so currently what we do is we build the whole solution and that will generate all the WSP packages and will, cop will be copied to this build output. So what we need to do in order to deploy all these packages to our environment is copy this whole folder into whatever environment you want to deploy to and run the upgrade. And when we run the upgrade, it detects which environment you are into. So if we are on production or staging, or if you are just on a, on a dev environment or any other. So we're gonna get all these XMLs, which are just configuration files, and we're gonna run the deployment script, which is a PowerShell script. Okay, so for each environment we, we deploy that, we have to have all the permissions and we have to know which environment you are into and then you have to run this. So it's very time consuming and if someone comes in without all this knowledge, they won't be able to just start and deploy the solution. And apart from that, the person that needs to deploy a solution to staging your environment uh, has to have all the permissions to do so and that's a security issue as well. Okay, so let's start and, and let's see how I configured the continuous integration so we can bypass all these issues we have. Okay, so this deployment uh, project is actually responsible for creating the build output folder. So this generates all the scripts, which are basically copy from these scripts here. And this also copies all the WSPs from each of the SharePoint projects into this folder. So what we want to achieve is to have a package with all the WSPs that we need. And that's all. We don't need any of the other scripts or configuration files anymore because that's going to be in the Octopus Deploy. Uh, configuration and, st and deployment steps. Alright, so for that to happen, I'll leave this project as it is because it's going to create uh, the output folder and it's going to copy all the WSP uh, package to this folder. So I'll leave it the way it is. But what I added to this project was Octopack. And what this does is it creates a new get package, which is going to be used by Octopus Deploy to deploy this package to the environment. Okay, apart from adding that, I created also a new get spec uh, file, which is going to tell me what the ID of the package is and some of some some of other information that we might need. Uh, what I added also was to add all the WSP files into a deployment folder. So once we package that, in the package, we'll have all the WSPs as well. All right, so that's what we want to achieve. And we're going to use this package to deploy to the, to the environment. Alright, so first of all, we're going to go to Team City to show you how I set up Team City and how I set up the build process to get all the files and build the, the, the whole solution. Alright, so if I want to start from scratch, I could go to Administration, Projects, and create a new project. But for now, I'm just going to edit this one that I created to show you what I did so far. Alright, so in this project, I configured the version control system. So if we go to VCS routes, you can see that I created the TFS connection here. And if you go to edit, you 
you see much like a vanilla configuration. So we have Team Foundation Server as the as the VCS, some IDs and names, and that's the URL I'm getting from, and that's the root of the SharePoint project I'm using. For now, I set up my username and password just for testing purpose. But in the future, we're going to use the Team City uh, login as the user to access DFS. So we can go and test the connection. So that's working fine. All right, so let's go back. So next, we'll go to general settings. And we're going to see our build step, our build configuration. So if we go to the build configuration, Um, there is nothing nothing fancy on the general settings, so just name and ID and the build number format, which is pretty standard. Um, in the version control settings, you see that I touched uh, TFS, the SSW SharePoint, as the version control system. In the build steps, now that's the, 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 the fun part. All right, so let's edit the build step. In the build step, we're going to use MS build to build our solution. Uh, we're going to set ssw.sharepoint.sln, which is our solution. The version of MS build, we're not going to use any tools, so none. We're going to run on 64-bit. And that's all the parameters I'm sending to MS build to actually package the whole solution. So build and package. So I'm using Visual Studio version 12.0. Um, that's the path of the MS build framework tools. Um, I'm enforcing that files should be added into the NuGet package. So that's why I need this one. And for some reason, uh, it didn't like me to add the uh, configuration equal to release. So because of that, I created this system variable. So if I go to parameters, you see there is a system property called system.releaseConfig, which passes the p configuration equal, equals to release. So that's how I did that. OK, and the rest is pretty vanilla. Um, actually, after, after installing the Octopack the Octopus uh, plugin for TeamCity, um, these two options will appear here. So what this does is as soon as we build the solution, we're going to run Octopack for any project that has Octopack installed. So for the only project we have Octopack, which is the SharePoint dot deployment, we're going to run that and we're going to package um, using the spec I created pre previously. So that's about it. So I'm going to cancel that, go back to the previous screen. And the next step is the deployment. So what I'm going to do here is as soon as I build, I'm going to call Octopus Deploy, create a new release, and deploy to the dev environment. I'm going to show you more about it on the Octopus side. But that's basically it. We have our Octopus URL here. We're going to we're gonna create a, an API key that we can create from from Octopus, and that's about it. All right, so once the project is built, just going to go back to the dashboard here. Once the project is built, um, what's going to generate are the artifacts, artifacts for that um, project, and that's what I have. I have the SSW SharePoint deployment, which is the the package ID that I configured here on the NuGet spec. And if I go further, I'll see that in the deployment folder, I have all the WSP packages that I need to deploy to a SharePoint environment. OK, so going to the Octopus deploy side of it, I could create a new brand new project if I want to by going to projects all and create a new project. But for now, I'm just going to edit 
the one I have here so I can show you how I configured. So if I go to process, I'm going to see all the deployment steps that I have configured. So in the deployment step, I'm going to add it just to show you. Uh, all I do here is I'm going to get the package from TeamCity team and I'm going to get this package here, ssw.sharepoint.deployment, which is configured in the NuGet spec file. And the way this NuGet feed is configured is by going to library and external feed and that's how I configured the, the connection between Octopus Deploy and TeamCity. Right, so let's go back to the process and go back to the deployment step and that's all about it. So it's gonna get the latest version, the latest pack, package from TeamCity and it's gonna deploy and unpackage into the environment you want. So that's about it. I'm gonna go now to the upgrade step and that's what it actually way actually does the deployment. So it calls the PowerShell script and deploys the, 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 the WSP package to, to a SharePoint environment. So let's click here and edit. So if we have a look at this script that we have here we can say that it's basically a copy of the script we have in our current project, which is the SSWS speed deploy, apart from some changes. So instead of using XML as the source to set the variables, we're gonna configure all that in Octopus deploy. So if we go back to Octopus, you can see in here, in the first line of code, I get the, the current path and I get the deployment the deployment folder so I can use that to get all the WSPs and upload to the to the SharePoint environment. If we scroll down a little bit we're gonna see at the end that we have some URLs here so we have rules URL which previously was coming from a XML file but we, we're not going to use that anymore. We're just going to call that. And this is going to be created and generated by the Octopus configuration. So rules URL, SharePoint URL, and all of them uh, added here. So let's see how the variables are configured. So if we go to variables, you can see you're going to see that we have rules host rules URL, SharePoint host, SharePoint URL. And that's basically a, a copy of all the variables we have in the XML files. So rules host, URL, host, URL. And we're going to set the scope for that as well. So if we deploy to, to dev01, it's going to use this variable. So rules 2013.dev.ssw.com.au. If, it's, if you use staging, then it's going to use this one. So that's why we have this scope here on the right hand side. So that's about it. So if we go to environments, you're going to see all the environments I have set up. So I have um, a dev slash test environment and a staging environment. And in the future, we're going to add production environment here as well. So if we go back to the home page, you're going to see that this package was deployed to the dev environment and succeeded. If we click on succeed, we are then able to promote that to staging. So we could just click here and it would deploy to the staging environment. All right, so this environment I'm, I'm in right now is the dev environment. So this environment is set up as an octopus tentacle. So because of that, I can go to C drive Octopus, that's how it was set up. Go to Applications SP 2013 Dev1. And I can see here the package that was deployed and unpackaged. So if we go here, we have all the versions. And just going back to Octopus Deploy, let's see which version it was used. So it was used the 1.1.16. So that's the latest one. 
So if we go inside, we're going to see that we have a deployment folder with all the WSP packages. So that's how it's going to do to deploy all the packages to the current environment. So going back to permission, since we have some permission issue, I'm just going to show you how this is going to be solved in, in this example. So since this, this uh, octopus deployed tentacle, you can see that we have a service in here called octopus deploy tentacle and it used the local system as the user. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up this user to have all the access that we need to deploy and activate all the features that we need for that SharePoint project. So in central admin, we're going to set this user as the farm admin if he's not already set up. Uh, we're going to go to all the site collections and set this user as site collection admin for the sandbox solution projects. And that's it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.